The crash of Air India Flight 171, at first it looked like a tragic mechanical failure. But now, investigators believe the real cause may lie deep inside the Boeing 787 Dreamliner itself. A hidden flaw, a known risk, and possibly a deadly secret Boeing chose not to fix. What else has this aircraft been hiding? And could this explain not just AI-171, but a string of terrifying incidents across the world? Some evidence, even from FAA reports and internal findings, has just revealed the truth Boeing never wanted you to hear. Let's check it out. Not long after the AI-171 crash, investigators began reviewing unusual incidents involving other Boeing 787s. That's when a bizarre failure caught everyone's attention, something that had happened months earlier during a routine ground test at Phoenix Airport. A parked 787, with no passengers on board and no emergency, suddenly deployed its Ram Air turbine, or RAT. Now the RAT isn't some minor part. It's a last resort device, a wind-driven emergency turbine that only activates during a complete loss of electrical power in flight, like in a worst case, mid-air failure. On the ground, while powered by external systems, it should never deploy. And yet it did. This wasn't a one-off fluke. Engineers traced the cause to a faulty central power control unit, which misinterpreted normal conditions as a full electrical failure. In other words, the system thought the plane was plummeting without power and triggered survival protocols, even though nothing was wrong. Now imagine this same fault happening during a flight. The moment that RAT drops midair without justification, the aircraft immediately disables autopilot, cuts certain navigation functions, and reroutes control logic into emergency fallback mode. It's not designed to ask questions. It reacts as if disaster has already struck. And in a cockpit full of cascading warnings and false emergency behaviors, pilots could lose situational awareness fast. Here's the part that makes it truly unforgivable. Boeing already knew. This rat misfire was flagged in internal testing logs years earlier. But instead of issuing a mandatory software update or a safety bulletin to airline operators, the issue was quietly brushed aside, deemed not urgent enough to delay deliveries or raise concern. In isolation, the rat glitch looks like a freak technical error. But combined with the events of AI-171, where abnormal system behavior reportedly preceded the crash, it raises a much bigger question. Did a known software misfire help push that aircraft into emergency logic it didn't need until it was too late to recover? One of the most disturbing discoveries came not from an in-flight incident, but from a ground-based teardown at a Texas test facility. Engineers inspecting a Boeing 787 removed the insulation layers behind the cockpit and got a close look at the forward pressure bulk head a component so critical, it's often called the life wall. Its job, to keep the cabin pressurized while flying at 39,000 feet, where the outside air is nearly unbreathable, what they found was a nightmare in slow motion. Drill holes were misaligned, off by enough that the connecting rivets didn't reach the structural load-bearing layer underneath. Some rivets were too short, meaning they weren't actually fastening anything solid. Others, had signs of internal corrosion, likely due to moisture trapped between layers during rushed assembly. Even worse, there were areas where the wrong type of rivet was used entirely, ones not rated to handle the pressure differential of a cruising aircraft. Now here's the problem. None of this is visible from the outside. You could inspect this plane a hundred times with the naked eye and still miss it. Detecting these flaws requires industrial endoscopy and high-resolution ultrasonic scanning, tools not typically used unless there's already suspicion, and these weren't isolated incidents. Similar defects were found across multiple Dreamliners built at the South Carolina plant, a facility already under scrutiny for skipping inspections and rushing output to meet deadlines. Internal Boeing engineers had warned just one millimeter of pressurization leak at cruising altitude could drop the cabin's oxygen level to near zero in under 20 seconds. Sound familiar? That's because one of the early theories in the AI-171 crash was pressurization instability. It was dismissed until now. This isn't just poor quality control. It's the kind of deep structural vulnerability that can turn one routine flight into a silent rapid descent.
Now let's talk about a different kind of threat, one that creeps in quietly and strikes at the aircraft's central nervous system, water leakage into the electronic equipment, or E&E, &E, bay. After a 13-hour long-haul flight, maintenance crews in Europe discovered wet carpeting near the mid-cabin area of a 787. Initially brushed off as humidity, the real cause became horrifyingly clear when they pulled up the soundproofing insulation. Water had leaked straight through the cabin floor and dripped directly into the Eni Bay. This bay contains the aircraft's flight control computers, electrical routing systems, avionics modules, and power switching units. It's supposed to be completely sealed off. Moisture here is not just unwanted, it's potentially catastrophic. So where was the water coming from? Investigators traced it back to leaky O-rings around the lavatories, condensation overflow from drinking water tanks, and even malfunctioning emergency drain lines. But the bigger issue wasn't just the water, it was what came with it, metal shavings, bacteria, and dust, all trapped inside the insulation material. Over time, that mix interacts with high voltage systems, creating electrical arcs, corrosion paths, and in some cases, localized heat damage or short circuits. Even worse, FAA internal reports and leaked Boeing memos confirmed that this wasn't a one-off. The issue had been raised repeatedly by engineers as far back as the aircraft's early production runs, but instead of issuing a design overhaul, Boeing implemented quick fixes, patch the drains, add inspection intervals, tell airlines to keep an eye on it. In March 2025, a formal FAA directive finally forced a fleet-wide inspection of the Ine Bay drainage system, but by then, countless 787 had already been operating for years with moisture vulnerabilities in their most sensitive control zone. Put bluntly, this isn't a possible future risk. This is a known, ongoing failure that Boeing let fester. And when you realize how easily water and wiring can interact, especially during turbulence or heavy descent, well, you begin to see just how thin the margin really is between a safe landing and a silent systems collapse. Here's where things go from troubling to downright surreal. While the public was reassured that Boeing had things under control, a very different reality was unfolding behind closed doors. Over 120 Dreamliners were quietly routed through so-called shadow factories, off the books workshops where structural defects were being fixed out of view without a single word disclosed to the public or even some airline clients. That's not speculation. That comes directly from Sam Salapur a Boeing engineer turned whistleblower. According to his testimony, many of these aircraft weren't truly repaired. They were forced into shape. Defective joints weren't re-drilled or replaced. They were mechanically compressed to fit molds, introducing long-term stress points that no external inspection could detect. It's like hammering a cracked bone back into place and calling it healed. And these weren't isolated oversights. A pattern had already emerged. First, it was the lithium battery fires back in 2013. Then came the undisclosed fuselage gaps between 2020 and 2024, and in 2025. We had multiple concurrent issues, pressurization anomalies, emergency system misfires, and water breaches near vital electronics. Every time, the response was the same. Patch it up, move along. Even when the FAA stepped in with new inspection mandates, the deeper problem kept resurfacing because the real issue wasn't just faulty parts, it was the mindset behind how those faults were handled. A mindset that treated each failure as a PR problem, not a safety crisis. And now we're looking at the cost of that silence, not just in dollars, but in lives put at risk every time a 787 takes off with hidden repairs and buried warnings. So what ties all of this together the faulty pressure bulkheads, the rat misfires, the moisture in the end bay, the quiet repairs behind closed doors. The real issue isn't just flawed parts, it's a flawed system. And that system lives inside Boeing's corporate culture. Everything began to shift after Boeing's 1997 merger with McDonnell Douglas. Over time, the company drifted from its roots as a safety-obsessed, engineer-driven firm to one run by finance executives and boardroom decision makers. Safety engineers were no longer seen as essential. Many were reassigned, ignored, or forced to retire early if they raised too many alarms. Quality control inspectors saw rounds of layoffs. Internal safety protocols were quietly rewritten. Take the outsourcing of parts. 
a decision made for cost saving, not reliability. One supplier in Italy, MPS, was found to have delivered substandard metal fittings used in structural supports underneath hundreds of Dreamliners. These weren't just cosmetic flaws. These were components meant to carry load stress during turbulence and landings, and yet they slipped through. Why? Because oversight had been systematically weakened. Boeing's internal audits were increasingly rushed, often signed off without full inspections, just to meet quarterly delivery targets. One internal report from 2021 even admitted that entire inspection steps were skipped to hit international shipping deadlines. By 2024, the company's crisis became undeniable. FAA oversight, once practically hand-in-hand -hand with Boeing, was now operating independently, issuing its own directives. That same year, Boeing's CEO resigned. Stock prices fell nearly 40%, and several major airlines, Qatar, Lufthansa, Singapore, began shifting orders to the Airbus A350, not because it was more luxurious, but because it was less scandal-prone. The truth is harsh, but it's unavoidable. A Dreamliner doesn't crash because of one rivet or one misfire. It crashes because the system built to prevent those things was silenced. And now the question is this. How many more warning signs will we ignore before something far worse happens? If this hit you like it hit us, don't let this story disappear. Share it. Talk about it. Pressure regulators. Hold corporations accountable. Because the most dangerous thing inside that aircraft is the illusion that someone else is watching.